Okay. Granville, how do you spell purple purple pepper? Is it six P's or seven? <laughs> Granville, nurse Gladys Emanuel, with her black bag neatly laundered and her blouse tightly packed. <laughs> Rushing away to someone's bedside? Huh. One day, with any luck, it might be mine. Let's hope not, she's a midwife. <laughs> Come on. Kill that for flaming mouse. <laughs> what gets me is if, if he can move like that, well, why hasn't he got a number on his jersey? <laughs> He's faster than you are. Well, I know that, don't I? But that's no good hanging around here wait, waiting for a cheese eating tortoise, is it? <laughs> Come on, help me get these tins picked up. You realise it's half past six? Oh, yeah, there'd be some silly fool still in bed. <laughs> I mean, you can't believe it, can you? Well, they could be down here, you know, having a ball with all these old tins. Listen, Granville, just remember that as my nephew, all these old tins will be yours, you know, when I've gone. Ah, yes, but will I be able to withstand the notoriety? <laughs> I mean, they'll be nudging each other when I walk down the street. And they'll be saying, oh, up there he goes, you see him? Well, you wouldn't believe it to look at him, but he's rolling in old tins. <laughs> see, there's no labels on these tins. Well, we don't know that, do we? They, they might be on the inside. <laughs> I like that. That is ingenious. Well, it would stop them falling off, wouldn't it, and, and finishing up like this with no labels on them. You all that stuff, you got that rotten auction, all that fire damage stock, isn't it? The fair price was right. How do you know the price was right if you don't know what's in them? Because my hand automatically started to bid. I've got a flair for this sort of work, you know. When I'm on the threshold of a reasonable profit, a, a, a razor-sharp instinct takes over. I'm under the control of something powerful but, but, but primitive, like the VAT inspector. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wonder what's in them. Well, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? They're full of mysterious promise, aren't they? They're a bit like uh, Gladys Emanuel's blouse, you know them. <laughs> <laughs> Only a damn sight easier to open, I can tell you. <laughs> Look, don't you worry about what's in them. Let me worry about what's in them. I haven't been in this trade all my life without de developing an ear, you know. Me Mulligatonian leak. <laughs> Now, during the war, Herbert Ogden spent a whole week's wages on a land girl we a wiggle like that. Why? From Darlington. All he got were a, a, a tip on what to do with his broccoli. <laughs> hey, up. I hope she's back. <clears throat> I'll just steer one and I'll wander over casually. You were out early this morning, Gladys Emanuel, fresh from your lonely, warm bed. I never said it was lonely. Don't you ever make a wish that you'd wake up one morning and find a handsome uh, local shopkeeper in it? No. <laughs> Time is passing us by, you know. It's no longer springtime. 
Why don't we get engaged before we both got a moustache? <laughs> well, I can still look at your legs without thinking about orthopedic shoes. <laughs> Come on. Let's strike while the iron's still lukewarm. <laughs> I can't get engaged right now. In half an hour, I've got to go to Charnley Street and have a baby. Listen, why don't you come over one night and, and, and rub me chest with Vic? <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth, I've been thinking a lot about us two lately. Not the same as actually doing it, though, is it? <laughs> you know, I don't know why some folks say, well, let the devil take the iron most. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, he can get in the queue. <laughs> How can I be sure you really fancy me? That you're not just trying to stop me order going to the supermarket round the corner? I want you to marry me, Gladys Emanuel. There's nobody appreciates your shape more than a member of the Gregorosa's Federation. I wonder what it would look like with a bit of parsley around. <laughs> You'll stop at nothing, will you? You shower me with gifts. Last time it was half a pound of butter, way past its expiry date. <laughs> we were meant for each other. A man with a chest stutter needs a big target to make love to. What a tongue he's got. Who cleans the nipples on your windscreen watches for you? <laughs> I do. Me, devoted Arkwright. Have you no words of encouragement for me at all? Save me a small brown loaf, unsliced, and two large tea cakes. I've got one reservation. Oh, have you? What's that? Well, you have to promise to wear someone a bit, bit more playful than them. <laughs> Not your cheeky thing, then be mothers. <laughs> yes, she showed me the baby last week. I don't think it's his. Oh. It looks more like him that comes to read the meter. Well, they're in some uh, very awkward places, them meters, you know. <laughs> he knows his way around. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, well, that reminds me, Mrs. Blewett. We've got some uh, very, very good value in tin food this morning. What is it? This one, well, let's see. <laughs> It's very good value, Mrs. Bluey. Yeah. It's no use to me. I'm not looking for things I can keep. Oh, well, that's just as well with your husband uh, popping off quickly like he did. We never know when we'll be taken or whither is our destination. No, still, I should have thought he'd have had some idea in being the Shacharaban driver. <laughs> I've seen them taken in the fullness and the pride. Oh, I know. Well, one minute they're on top of the world and the next minute there's this awful figure in black. We're beckoning them towards the breathalyzer. <laughs> Did you know they buried old Scrooby last Tuesday? Old Scrooby, old Scrooby, old Scrooby. Did they? Oh, what? I didn't know he died. Neither did she. Oh. He sat there on the settee for three hours staring at her. <laughs> he never was very talkative, though, was he? <laughs> no, I mean, he wasn't. I once ran over him on the shop bike, right across his foot, and he never said a word. <laughs> He just hit me with his crutch. <laughs> but it wasn't my fault, I just came round the corner and there he was, trying to strangle this kid. Oh, yes, he always knew how to command respect in the young, I'll say that. <laughs> and he looks like death across at number 29. Oh, dear. They come at nine o'clock on Thursday night with an ambulance and took him away. They're all expecting him back, but I told her. He looks yellow to me. That means kidneys. I wouldn't give you tuppence for his kidneys. How much is your boiled ham? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a bit more expensive than his kidneys. <laughs> but it's a bit of choice stuff. They're, they're, they'll never take that away in an ambulance. I'll have a quarter. Right. I, th I think you'll enjoy it, Mrs. Blewett. I, I expect so. Hey, yeah. and speaking of a bit of choice stuff, have you seen her around at 87 lately? 87? Isn't she the one with the, uh... That's the one, yeah. yes. How is that new lodger? Not as fit as she is. 
I wonder how the husband's taking it. Well, very infrequently by the sound of it. <laughs> <coughs> Her at 85 said she's heard them playing Scrabble till gone midnight. Oh, dear. Well, there's no good will come of that. I mean, that sort of thing's bound to finish up in a, in a, in a four-letter word, isn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, have you ever known her interested in spelling before? When she sent me that vicious letter, she spelt nosy and nosy old bag with a Z. <laughs> he never did, did he? Hey, would you my mind not stop taking through my legs, please? <laughs> Wasn't there anything else then, Mrs. Zibbley? Ah, uh, there was a lot, but nothing I could repeat to you. Oh, oh, I see. Well, that'll be now 97p, love. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, don't bother about the 3p. You, you can owe it me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <clears throat> get, get that in the till quick before she realises she's been dumb. <laughs> I wish you'd put it in. You know, I'm terrified of that spring clip. <laughs> so much for to teach yourself Kung Fu. 98 weekly parts. <laughs> if you ask me, you've got more weekly parts now than when you started. <laughs> hey, who was that raver that Mrs. Blewett was on about? You know, her at number 87. Now, listen, I don't want you thinking about number 87. You keep right away from number 87. I've, I've seen Negroes going in there and coming out looking quite pale. <laughs> I mean, her mother was just the same, you know. During the war, I had to admonish her in front of the entire street when I was an air raid warden. She was uh, showing a couple of jigs in her upper story. <laughs> oh, yes, during the war, everyone was the same. You know, ordinary people went ga 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 <laughs> Wish I had a bit of frenzy in my life. Well, keep your fingers crossed. Maybe you'll get that my mouse up your trouser leg. <laughs> you think I'll ever find the time to get married? Why bother? Eh? Why bother? Your father never did. <laughs> <laughs> Mother said that he died in an accident. I think he just used that as an excuse. <laughs> now, come on, give me that pound note and let's get it in the till before it fades. <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey, that reminds me, Jaws is on this week at the audience. How do, Granville? How do, Gloria? Okay, Granville, fetch your cloth and wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> you don't know you're born. Don't know much about what causes it, either. <laughs> Do you know that the things were so hard in my day that people from Bradford used to go looking for work in Pakistan? <laughs> What is the point of being on the threshold of life if you've always got to wear a flaming penny? Kids should have less pocket money, that's what I say. If I could lure them into the shop a bit more often, they would have a no. <laughs> I mean, look at that Gloria. She's got no idea what I look like in trousers. <laughs> I've never had any of the things that other young men take for granted. You better not have have had either. <laughs> if I ever could catch you ever having have had, you will be in trouble. You don't seem to realise it. it's a grave responsibility having a nephew who keeps getting himself emotionally knotted. Well, what about you and the nurse? Oh, yes. You know, if I don't marry her soon, I shall have to buy a new electric blanket. <laughs> Hi-up, seconds out. <laughs> the usual, Mr Bristol. The usual, Mr. Bristow! <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. I'm sorry, I, I didn't see you coming. Uh, what do you want, the usual? I'll have the usual. Oh, oh, that's unusual. <laughs> yeah, you usually have something different, don't you? Right, one dozen. <laughs> Wouldn't it 
be easy if you opened an account. When Wales get home rule, do you think they'll nationalise Clive Jenkins? <laughs> One of the old ones, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> there we are then. Lovely. There you go. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You don't go out without your helmet done up. Your head'll come up here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you are. Eh? Right, right down. Eh? Right down. Bless you. Oh, I see yet. Mm. Well, let go of them. Let go of them. Oh, I've got your strap done up too tight. Sorry. There you are. Bye bye. Thank you. Well, who was it? Ruddy Apollo 3, the plastic astronaut. Oh, that's Mr. Bri Bristol. Yes, Mr. Bri Bri Bristol, yes. Hey, haven't you got that tin open yet? No. Look, why don't you j j jiggle it a bit? Are you sure you know what's in this? I've told you it's beefy chunks in gravy. Beefy chunks in grip. <laughs> it's lucky I did some to dice carrots to go with it, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's for pudding? Cheese and biscuits. <laughs> Thirty-five, Lindley Road, eighty-eight, eighty-nine, eighty-seven, eighty-five, eighty-seven, eighty-seven. I bet it's all a legend. I bet she's not really like that. I bet if I walk through this gate with half a pound of streaky bacon, pretending I'm mistaken the house for number eighty-five. I bet I'll be no nearer an understanding of the forces which govern the human predicament. Winston, what's she got you doing now? I'm building another blinking bookcase, aren't I? Oh, it's a wonderful mind-broadening thing, this second marriage of yours, isn't it? What do you want, a large or a small? I'm not have a large. Yeah. It's a big bookshelf, is it? Here you are, then. Let's have your finger. Come on. That, oh, dear. Steady, Yeah. Well, it's a good job it's not, not your drinking hand, isn't it? You must be joking. Drinking hand? What practice does that get these days? <laughs> when I tell her I feel like a drink, she says, oh, good. Now maybe you'll get on with building cocktail cabinet. <laughs> have, you, have you told her you, you're a mechanical idiot? She won't listen. Do you know she wanted me to do on her honeymoon? Now you're not supposed to give away cabinet secrets, are you? <laughs> she wanted me to prove how much I loved her by redoing the bathroom with self-adhesive tiles. <laughs> self-adhesive... Have you used them? No. I was up till two o'clock trying to let go of a nighty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Hey, hang on. You know what you want, don't you? You want a nice medicinal bottle? Could you use one? I could murder one. There you are, then. Have a go at that. You'll like that. Cheers. Cheers. How are you making out with the nurse? Oh, I'm progressing, you know, progressing. There, were, there was a time when she didn't even bother to ignore me. But now, only this morning, there she was, hitting me with a clothes prop. Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> I've had a bit of an accident. Yeah, what? I've dented my front spindle. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> I, I, th I thought for the moment you'd damage the bike. <laughs> <laughs> what happened then? Oh, I fell in Lindley Road. Oh, you wouldn't be the first one to do that. Hey, <laughs> I hope you haven't been near that 87. I was just delivering the goods. I know, that's what I'm afraid of, Sonny. <laughs> I'll get off now. What do you want for the plaster? 4p. See you again. Thanks for the drink. Oh, that's another 14 for the drink. Aye. Right. <laughs> you said have a drink. Come on. Thank you. Hey, there's, there's threepence on that bottle. <laughs> Well, uh, what, what were you doing? About five miles an hour. <laughs> no, on the proper side of the road and some silly idiot had parked a van right in the gutter. Oh, well, what a stupid place to leave it, right in the gutter. <laughs> There's lipstick on you. No. There's lipstick on you. You've been to that 87, haven't you? No. You have to wipe it off at once. Someone in the shop now. There, yeah, how's that? Is that all right? Lovely, yes. Beautiful. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Shh! Be quiet. What, you've gone mad or something. Whatever. Listen, you're a pawn in my dastardly game. I'll sit there. I've just got to find out. <clears throat> hey, oh, I'm glad to see you. I'm very worried, worried about the lad. He's, he's come off his bike. What? Will you come through the back, love? You're not trying to get me in that back room under false pretenses, are you? Oh, now, as if I would. Come on. Look, he's, he's got concussion, I think. Look, there's nothing wrong with him. I can't prove it. See, <laughs> listen, he's gone all incoherent. You can't <laughs> have a look at his leg, would you? He can't have concussion in his leg. Look, I keep telling you there Just is nothing... Just bite on that if the pain gets unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> he's hardly even grazed. Well, his, his legs look very pale to me. Well, I... Didn't think so at all. The only time they ever go out is when I make a delivery. As a midwife, I do know how you feel. Look, get a soak in the bath tonight, love. You'll be all Don't right. Don't stroke him. I hope you haven't come over here to, to demol him about. I've come for me loaf and tea cakes. He's all right. You look a bit flushed, though. You should be careful at your age. <laughs> You've been going through the change, haven't you? <laughs> in the till, I mean. Oh. <laughs> no, it, uh, to be honest, you know, it's the top of my leg, to be honest. I, we, I wish you'd have a look at the top of my leg. I'll do no such thing. Well, I'll tell you what, then I'll have a look at yours, then. <laughs> I've got me rounds to make. Oh. He's perfectly all right. But if you're really worried about him, you'd better give him 24 hours complete rest. Oh, a day in bed? What bliss! Granville tucked up in bed all day. Uh, <laughs> listen, are you deaf? Go and answer that bell. Well, I'll be talking about the shortest day. <laughs> <coughs> talking of a day in bed, uh, why don't you come over on Sunday afternoon and practice your splints and bandaging, eh? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you some cooling powders. You take two in a bath of cold water. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've had enough cooling powders when I saw what was hanging on your clothesline this morning. Come on, I demand the plain unvarnished truth about your plain unvarnished underwear. Oh, get away from me. Oh, I'm glad he's just a little peek. I promise to stand well back if you'll just reveal the merest corner. Eh? In an atmosphere of mutual frankness and trust. Go, oh, get oh, off! Oh, no, no, wait, oh! Never If she's national health, I suppose I'm entitled to a piece of her by Act of Parliament. <laughs> I reckon we, 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 we could make a go of it once she stops hitting me in the groin. <laughs> Ooh, what's that little lacy thing she's on? Surely she doesn't wear that on a bare bear, on a bare bear, on a bare bear, on a bingo night? <laughs> oh, no. I spoke too soon. She's just bare bear blown her nose on it. <laughs> We ought to have a van. Yeah, well, watch your mouth. I didn't bring you up to be an atheist about money. <laughs> what time are we going to close? I'm supposed to be meeting Gloria. Pleasure mad, aren't you, eh? Pleasure mad, aren't you? Don't just stand there, grab hold of this, as they say at number 87. <laughs> <laughs> right, now what? Well, when I give you the word, just uh, uh, jiggle it a bit. <laughs> That's just the point. 
When the time came for me to jiggle it a bit, I found I hadn't had enough experience. <laughs> I think more people should ride bicycles, Granville. In my young day, district nurses used to ride bicycles. Then there was no argument about where, what they were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Plates, Granville. Suddenly the world is a brighter place. <laughs> Although to the casual passerby, it might appear that I seem to have my leg fat. <laughs> Why don't you just jay jay jiggle it a bit? <laughs> Are you all right? Bit of a jolt in the pedals. <laughs> Much improved psychologically. I was quite overcome by a spirit of patriotism when I saw that pretty little flag you was waving. <laughs> What it is to be mad and middle-aged. Come indoors and let me have a look at you. Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Come on, I'll ring. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I'm still stocking it, but it doesn't seem to be this widespread passion for treacle anymore. It's gone the way of trams and uh, uh, wreck it's blue. Well, uh, how's retirement suiting you then, Freddy? Oh, passable, passable. I'm getting used to it. Yeah, well, you've, uh, you've had a lot of training for it, haven't you? All them years at the coal board. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I'd fancy retirement myself, you know. I wouldn't mind it for the first six months, but I wouldn't like to earn my living at it. <laughs> hey, uh, how's that daughter of yours, that youngest? Gillian? Yeah. Married an hourly health officer. Oh, yes. Always the one for glamour and excitement. <laughs> Cheeky little minx. <laughs> Ooh, what's you up to now, then? Running a pub at Driffield. Oh, dear. Is that what the nuclear deterrent come to, is it? <laughs> and I want a large pad of writing paper. Hey, you must have been retired longer than I thought, Freddy, if you've used up all that coal board stationery already. <laughs> Here you are. Here's a nice one. Look at that. Is that the biggest you've got? Listen, the next size to that is a roll of wallpaper. Trying <laughs> to do for a start. Yeah. I'm going to write my war memoirs. Oh, well, you'll need a packet of postcards, won't you? <laughs> a view from the home front. Oh. An absorbing personal record. I was there, you know, on the night they bombed Tomlinson Street. Yeah, I'll never know what Goering had against Tomlinson Street. <laughs> Unless it was that hy hygienic fisheries, you know. Perhaps he found out about the shape of Percy's chips. <laughs> That'll be 43p. Come on. I feel it's a duty to record it all for posterity. Yeah. My entire role in the whole affair. Yeah, well, I, I wonder why you were up so early this morning. Uh, what are you going to do this afternoon? Uh, World War Three? <laughs> it came to me in a dream. Oh. This voice said, Freddy, why don't you write your war memoirs? Up to that, I hadn't even thought of it. Well, yeah, you don't, do you? Uh, well, did you recognise the voice? Who was it? Well. At first, I thought it must be God. Yes, well, you would at that time of night. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out to be Mr. Samuelson from Gordon Street. Well, him with a him with a horse and cart? Yes. Well, I'm surprised you thought he was God with the vocabulary he's got. <laughs> Unless he was talking about that place there down the road from Gomorrah. Sodom. Exactly, that's what I thought. <laughs> Why don't we get a van? What was that? Say, did you see it at all? I think the shop's haunted, you know, Freddy. Every time we do a shop delivery on the bike, this little angry figure appears, clad all in off-white, wrapping its cycle clips, moaning in an awful voice, why don't we get a van? Why don't we get a van? Do you think I haven't considered every factor? I've run it all through the computer, you know. It's all gone through this keen commercial brain, which is linked through all the ingenious circuits to my tummy wallet. <laughs> Peddling wears out the insides of your legs. And I've always got come up with the same answer. Keep Granville onto two wheels. My calves are getting all knotted. <laughs> well, they are. They're getting all big and horrible. I don't go swimming anymore. I look like a rickshaw coolie. <laughs> Very embarrassing when you start to bulge in a swimming costume. 
Hey, look, I hope you don't expect me to deliver this lot, do you? No, I don't. There's all that lot over there, no. Hey, oh, no. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. He's back with the gas company. He's tried it once before, to my knowledge. Took an overdose. Oh, you've learned a laxative. Oh, dear. <laughs> what a terrible way to go. Or at least to keep going. Wow. <laughs> he tried a bit harder this time. He did all it and all of his clothesline hadn't broke. Well, you see, that's the trouble. They, they will for purchase from these supermarkets, won't they? Now, if he'd bought that, you see, that, that's that three and four all the way through. That wouldn't have let him down at the last minute. <laughs> uh, two pounds of King Edwards, please. Right. Oh, there, morning, Mrs. Ellis. Morning. Hello, Vera, love. Is there any more news about your... I'm still waiting for a bed. <laughs> Your Granville stopped going out with Pembroke for his last. Oh, he's another one of this still waiting for a bed. <laughs> there you are, Mrs. Oh. <laughs> think we better have a carrier, Mr. Arkwright. Well, I think you'd be better, yes. Did you see him from Harrison's? Parked outside 87 again. I'm not kidding. He does more with a gammy leg than most blokes do with two. Ah, oh, well, they're all the same, these sharp men. They're always having to prove themselves. It was him from the new housing estate. Napoleon. Oh, I don't know what you were called. But he always wore them fancy boots. Yeah, uh, Earnshaw. Huh? Earnshaw. They lived in Eastfield Road. Presumably after he escaped from St. Helena. <laughs> You've weighed them once. Why are you taking them off? Well, they've got, got heavier. <laughs> <laughs> there must be the dust off the floor. <laughs> you what? Well, we're, we're allowed to charge for dirt, you know. Ask her at number 87. <laughs> There's a cold front coming in from the Atlantic here. You ought to go get something a bit warm around your chest. Like a hot shopkeeper. <laughs> what makes you think you're more appealing than an extra vest? You're a big bonny lass, you know. If we don't get engaged soon, I won't have time to explore all of you, will I? Have <laughs> you tried loosening your collar? <laughs> no, no, no. What I want to do is to try loosening yours. <laughs> you know, I've never looked down as their state registered nurse. <laughs> it's that shop that's doing it to you. You're stuck in there all day, every day, breathing in that spicy mixture of fire lighters and lavatory cleaners. <laughs> Look, why do, don't we get engaged? Then I could give you a discount. Why don't we just stop as we are, having a laugh and a joke with you goosing me occasionally? When I'm not looking. <laughs> hey, lass. You know what? I'd like to see you in a red dress with your rose in your hair, doing a flamenco. All oh, right. And if we got married within 24 hours, you'd have me in an apron with curlers in my hair, doing a casserole. <laughs> oh, heck. Fancy the Americans paying all that money for Disneyland when they could have had Marxism for nothing. <laughs> Supposed to be the age of women's lib. I don't think they got the hang of it yet. I'm still waiting to be molested. <laughs> the extreme left. That's all we ever hear about, isn't it? The, the, the extreme left. Funny expression, that isn't it? The extreme left. It's like a lot of leftovers, isn't it? <laughs> it's like all them little bits at the end of a party that nobody wants. <laughs> Come to think of it, that's not far off the truth. <laughs> I haven't even had a request played on family favourites. It says here this smiling young actress is tipped for stardom. And as usual, you can see both the tips quite distinctly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you realise how old I am? And the only thing I've ever handled intimately was last year's Christmas turkey. <laughs> well, and that was frozen. <laughs> Loosen your cacat, your head's steaming. <laughs> Happiness is a game for two players. 
You used to like the train spotting. What happened to your train spotting? <laughs> I wish we'd still got an empire. Yeah, it's a fair pity they pulled that down, won't it? <laughs> Well, I'd like to spend the monsoon season with the Eurasian mistress. You know, come back after a hard day flogging the natives. And there she is, waiting. Yeah. With almond eyes and 83 relatives on the borough. <laughs> it's not that I want to be promiscuous. Well, yes, it is really, but I can't afford it. I'd settle for one nerve-tingling affair. Hey, well, watch what you're doing with them chips. They're 7p each now, you know. <laughs> Yeah, before I settle down for good, I'd like to have a spot of colour in my life. Yeah, and when they turn up, them coloured spots, you'll be sorry. <laughs> I'd like to tame some very sport, very rich young woman, you know. Heiress elopes with shopkeeper's assistant. Is that what you want to be, eh? An international playboy on the Riviera circuit? Yes. Well, and throw up the only agency around here for back, sweet. <laughs> you know what we both need? Oh, I know what I need, a towel. Transport. Rubbish. Look, you can pick up an old van these days for a song. Yes, and, and guess who's a, a wallet's going to get laryngitis? <laughs> I mean, you can, you, you can get all your stuff from the warehouse, you know, still waiting for them to deliver. I am in no hurry. The nurse might go out with you more. Listen, you don't think I'm going to, going to buy a van just because... <laughs> Why would the nurse go out with me more? Well, because you could take her out of the district. I mean, she gets embarrassed round here. People know you both. I mean, if you nip over to her place, there are 40 pairs of beady eyes in the street trained on her bedroom window. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's cheaper just, just to draw the curtains. <laughs> you won't have anything to draw them for if you don't get transport. How old a van do you think you'd go out in? Well I, well, I could do it up, you know, make it nice inside. It would need something in the back, you know, for people to sit on. Like the mattress in the spare bedroom. <laughs> That's disgusting. It'll need airing. <laughs> I, uh, I'll just have a look at my licence. I know, I know I'm allowed to drive groups A, B, C and D, but I'm, I'm not sure about a mattress on wheels. As long as it's under 1,500 weight. Well, I certainly am. <laughs> but you see, there's the nurse to think about on top of me. <laughs> You want something that goes a long way on a gallon? Listen, with petrol the price it is, I want something that goes the whole way on a half a pint. <laughs> Aye, don't we all? <laughs> with almond eyes. <laughs> Here's one. Two owners, African Tan and Melba. Yeah, sounds like the three owners. <laughs> that's the colour. Oh, the colour. Well, that's, a, that's very informative, isn't it? Well, it's the power of advertising. You know, makes it sound better. They've got to have an attractive name. I mean, you wouldn't spend four quid on a bottle of perfume called Sweaty Elbows. <laughs> hey, look at this. Recent new engine. I'm not, not paying that sort of money. Where do they get the engine from? To Concord. <laughs> I hope you're not going to shame me. I hope you're not going to have us running about an old banger that looks like a converted outside toilet. <laughs> and you don't know where you get these jet-set attitudes from, I'm sure. Your mother was down to earth. A bit too often for her own good, but she meant well. <laughs> you forget, nobody knows who my father really was. Can I have a chalk ice? You know you can. You don't need to ask, Granville. Listen, Granville, you're orphan, you may be, but I want you to know that you've always got a home here, love. I mean, good, good times are bad. Whatever is mine is yours. Providing you always put your money straight in the till. Go on. <laughs> I bet if my mother had lived, my father would have come back and claimed her. Oh, yes. In a, in a, in a big black car, with a big crest on the door. Aye, oh, maybe. Yeah. West riding radio taxis. <laughs> <laughs> Who did she go out with? Well, there were a lot of ho-ha, ho-ho Hungarians <laughs> at, the, uh, at the miners' ho-ha hostel. You are. Some displaced aristocrat fleeing from the revolution. <laughs> you know what I want for my birthday? A balalaika. <laughs> All right. I'll see if I can get one uh, knitted for you. <laughs> now, listen, you've made a 93p profit so far. Are you going to put a pound in there or not? No, no, I want you to put it in. It's that spring clip. It's vicious. <laughs> oh, yeah.
Nothing wrong with that. Hey, oh, hello, Eva. How are you? I want something for his team. Something fatal but untraceable. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What about a nice a bacon end? That'll boil and come up sweet. Oh, I'll have some fish fingers. Fish fingers. I get no end of pleasure watching him eat fish fingers, you know. It's like bingo, really. I keep waiting for him to come up with a winner of a bone. <laughs> oh, thanks, Granville. Hey, I like your Granville. He looks like the kind of young man who'd be reckless enough to do something desperate for the love of a good woman. <coughs> Go, Granville, fair fetch your cloth. Go on. <laughs> There's some apples in that warehouse need polishing. Always have to go when customers get interested. Go on with you. She warms my Hungarian blood. Well, if you don't go and melt that all over the place, then clear off. <laughs> <laughs> Told you not to get him excited, Eva. He's a very funny age at the moment. I mean, he's, he's reading everything but the Grocer's Gazette. Oh, you mean that age when men are difficult to live with? Starts when they're 14 and finishes when they pass out of the crematorium? <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I better have some fire lighters. Listen, you're supposed to wait till he's dead first. Everybody keeps telling me he's drinking himself to death, but I've come to the conclusion they're just trying to cheer me up. Do you fancy an apple, either? Oh, no, thanks, love. He's loosened me that many teeth that really I'm much happier with a banana. <laughs> Here. Oh, it's only kidding, love. She was only kidding. Oh, well. Take it anyway. I woke up this morning with a powerful urge to give someone a banana. <laughs> oh, you're a good lad, Granville. I'll come and give you a big kiss in a minute. wasn't only kidding, but he has loosened all her teeth. And how's he going to feel when he finds out she's having an affair with a big banana magnet? <laughs> Listen, she's very unhappy. I might take her out one of these nights, you know, down the old disco. And there's nothing that you could say that'd stop me either. Her husband's been convicted of assaulted policemen. She's a married woman. I can't go out with married women. <laughs> very moral, you Hungarians, aren't you? She's a great little workhorse, so she'll be very sorry to say ta-ta to her. Yeah, well, you needn't bother at that price, need you? Oh, no, we're not going to have a thoroughly boring old argument about money, are we? No, I'm not. I'm going to have a thoroughly enjoyable argument about money. <laughs> well, he means it and all. In the past 18 months, the motor trade's gone completely to pieces. Customers have got no respect anymore. Six, seven, five, he said. Well, and naturally, I thought he was talking about the number plate, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Tell your old uncle, that is rock bottom for that sort of a vehicle. You see, that's rock bottom. You wash your mouth out. <laughs> I didn't bring you up to talk loosely about money, did I? Close your eyes and think of the mattress in the back. <laughs> you see, he's torn between these powerful, conflicting emotions. He'll soothe himself in a minute by counting all the change in the till. <laughs> You pounds. You get a four poster in the back of that one. <laughs> uh, we've got this bit of a gap. I am asking six, five, five, and you are prepared to offer. Well, 120. <laughs> Cash. And the uh, 14p for the bent bread. <laughs> I thought you were a serious prospect. I mean, I only come round to serious prospects. I could be in the showroom, drinking coffee, under sealing the new typist. <laughs> Bring us something nearer our price. There's plenty of room in the back.
Care to inspect the interior woodwork. Instant privacy. what we do. Why, why don't you leave it on approval? Oh, I couldn't do that, Mr. Arkwright. Oh. <laughs> well, until tomorrow, maybe. Ah, good. That, that will enable me to test its suitability for a variety of uh, retail purposes. <laughs> Very nice Please. of you. Oh, come in. Shut the door. Oh, we'll talk about that later, Jim. You got it. I'm happy, Doctor. I've got a jam all over me warehouse coat. You really Be quiet. It's we mint. Can sell the piano. You'll never sell your piano, Jim. You gotta practice, Jim. And practice till you're the first one handed pianist in the whole world. <laughs> I've got mints all over me warehouse gold. Oh. You know, I could do with you, Arkwright, but you will persist in trampling down what few romantic illusions I've got left. You say that to me? There's a spirit of eternal springtime. <laughs> Come not only to offer you my affection, but the chance of a grapple in the new vehicle. <laughs> You've finally lashed out on some transport. Oh, it wasn't easy. Oh, you'd better have a cup of tea. Well, if it's all the same for you, Gladys and Manuel, I'd sooner have an I night. know what you'd sooner have, but you're getting a cup of tea. Oh. <clears throat> well, well, well. The new mobile art prize. Yes, can I come to invite you for a nocturnal spin? A spin? <laughs> if you're taking me out, you're taking me out. It'll cost money. We'll have a meal and a bottle of wine. Listen, the way I feel about you, I could go it on half a lager and a salted peanut. <laughs> You've got some ground to cover before you get me up any country lane. Uh, I've got a bit of ground to cover after I get you up there, though. <laughs> so it's a meal, is it? Yes. Uh, that's your last word, is it? No. My last word's going to be something like, get your hand off there, that's far enough. <laughs> but that's my position so far. Take it or leave it. Well? Well, I'm thinking about it. What's to think about? Well, if I uh, buy half a bottle of wine, couldn't you do some sandwiches? <laughs> Get out! No. Get out of my house, all Arkwright! All right, all right. I'll buy you a meal, then. Oh, you romantic fool. Oh, I love the way your eyes flash when you get mad. <laughs> I must be trying to civilise you. I'll say one thing for you. You're not much trouble. You've got wandering hands, but I've only got to shout burglars. And the back round your wallet lies grease lightning. <laughs> I'll take your mother a tea. She must be parched. <laughs> hey, who's going to sit with her when we're out? Well, I can't Randolph Scott do it. I mean, anyway, with all that noise going on in there, I don't see any reason to go out. Why don't we stay and save the petrol? Gunfire's one thing, but at the first creak of a settee, she'll be banging on the wall with a stick. Oh. 
when you left him. Now, how do you mean? Well, I was just looking out the window and right outside your shop there's this great big black old... <laughs> you haven't, have you? Oh, uh... oh you wouldn't. Well, the, the paper price was right. Oh! Get out, you great stingy dog's body. You needn't think you're taking me out in that. I mean, I know I have to be laid in one of those one day, but not until it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> Well, I tell you, she said she uh, uh, wouldn't be seen dead in it. <laughs> you better get the garage on the floor and see what else they've got. Hello, Arkwright. Hmm? Oh, hello, Auntie Lily. No, 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 he's gone out for a ride in the new van. Eh? No, 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 it's not on business. No. It's his old trouble has reared up again and he's going to receive some medical attention. <laughs> if he plays his cards right. <laughs> that wine's gone straight to me legs. Uh, I, I think I'll jo join it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, hey, you've got your foot in me pocket. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I'd hate to crush your wallet. <laughs> oh, hey, could you get that, that leg in there first? <laughs> hey, mind where you're putting your feet. You'll, you'll dirty the roof. <laughs> if you're going to hold me there, would you mind blowing on your fingers a minute? <laughs> No, don't move your knee. Whatever you do, do, don't move that knee. This is ridiculous. Give it a chance. We haven't started yet. But you got something bigger. Would you prefer to rephrase that, please? Oh, oh, oh take me home. It's worse than track. No, look, it's just the wheel arts. That's all. I mean, old generations have been brought up on obstacles like this. And what? Just you and me and the wheel arch. Take me home. Well, what, what's in it for me? A cup of cocoa. Well, I hope there's plenty of sugar in it. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'll kill that Granville. Him and his bands. Oh. This one goes back tomorrow. Hey. How do you fancy a cuddle on a shop bike? Oh! Eh? <laughs> Just shows you, doesn't it? Beware of the large ambitions in small vans. I thought I'd pulled it off this time. Fortunately, it's only bruised. <laughs> so it's back my lonely bed. I enjoyed that good night kiss, though. She got a lot, a lot of Eastern promise behind that faint flavour of cocoa. <laughs> Rotten little van. Good place to park, though. I must try and remember. I think it was uh, just over the hump of her knee and sharp left at the first suspender. <laughs> Other. 
right. What are you doing, you fool? Oh, nothing, Milo. I'm free if you are. <laughs> well, what are you so staring at? Hello, Granville. Hello, Boreen. Hey. <laughs> Say, what can I get you? I want one of them instant pods for my sister. She's gone mad on them. Oh, we better put them on the dangerous drugs list then, haven't we? Eh? <laughs> Long time no see. This time last year. Yeah, I expect you've been busy. Not all that busy. You're fairly busy. <laughs> I've been away for a while. Oh, not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I've often thought about you, Granville. What? Any special reason? Very special reason. Mm. Do you remember uh, Elsie's party? Did I go to Elsie's party? <laughs> oh, come on, Granville. Don't tell me you don't even remember. Well, you know what it's like, Maureen. I mean, the drink was flowing, three glasses of wine, and I'm anybody's. You were mine at Elsie's party. <laughs> <laughs> we got very close. Oh. We must uh, meet sometime and discuss the future. <laughs> uh -huh. choo -choo -choo -choo. Choo -choo well, what do you think of our Eric, then? <laughs> <laughs> Our Eric? The baby. Who do you think he's like? Kojak. <laughs> look at me, look at me, standing around here. I'm, I've got all, I've got all my ironing to finish. I think that's what did it, Granville. The way you'll do anything for a laugh. Uh -huh. It's a good job you've got a sense of humour. I used to say to people, that Granville, I wonder what he'll be up to next. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. You shouldn't go around mentioning names like that. Why ever not? I've told everybody how you used to make me laugh. Everybody? Oh. And what have you been doing with yourself lately? I don't know. I've just been trying to think. I could have sworn it were nothing serious. <laughs> oh, come on. But what about the instant pudding? This is no time for regrets, Maureen. <laughs> Okay, Granville, perfect yet long. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to go galloping as if your sh shirt's on fire? I, I didn't know you were working on the door. Oh, well, I am. I am. This door here, have you made a note of that? Right. This one here. Right. No, the one I've just closed with me nose. <laughs> well, what, what are you doing there, anyway? Well, apart from bleeding, you mean. <laughs> no, look, stop making such a fuss. Let's have a look. Look, it's all right. It's, it's a bit red, that's all. Red? Come here, let's have a look. Oh, dear. You've ruined my chances with Nurse Gladys Emanuel. She'll think I'm a dirt, I'm a dirt, dirt. I'm so a you are. The <laughs> <laughs> what, dirty old man? <laughs> I'm trying to say the dipsomaniac. Let me finish. You've never had any chances with Nurse Gladys Emanuel. Rubbish. We're just waiting for her favourable circumstances. Happier times, like where when her mother dies. <laughs> Why does the nurse always act as though she can't stand you, then? Oh, it's a woman's way, Granville. You just wouldn't understand, you see. Well, there you go again. You shouldn't discourage me from these discussions. I'd, I'd, I'd like to ask you all sorts of questions about life. Like, why are you so mean when it comes to money? <laughs> Listen, Granville, just remember that under the British punitive tax system, a pound in the pocket's worth three at the accountants. <laughs> Secondly, could you become a father without noticing it after three glasses of wine at a party? No, I could not, because I don't know to drink wine at parties. And if you take my... What party? <laughs> no, 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 do you mind what party? It's just a hypothetical question, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Where have you been? I haven't been anywhere. That you can remember. That I can remember. Oh, I've been waiting for this to happen. I knew it would happen. Oh, I've seen you my mooning about. And you, you've been miles away, haven't you? Well, that's all very well in the shop. But there are some jobs when it pays to remember what you're doing. Was it? No. <laughs> Thank God for that. 
I'd never have believed you'd been such a fool. You know, if anybody had asked me, I would have sworn blind that you were still unsoiled. If anybody had asked me, I would have sworn blind I was still unsoiled. <laughs> if you'd seen the hours I'd spent trying to get soiled and nothing. <laughs> when it happens like this, while my back's turned. You can't duck when your back's turned. That's an anatomical impossibility. <laughs> Anyway, spare me the, the, the sordid details. I don't know the details. I must have been born under an unlucky star. Yes, it's quite possible the night your mother spent in Claiborne's haystack. <laughs> Trust me to find that I've been instructed in the pleasures of life when I wasn't even looking. Come, come and hold this door. Come on. And if you'll take my advice, you'll, you'll do the right and proper thing. Oh, I will, sir. Deny everything vigorously. <laughs> Putting another bolt on the door. I know where I should be putting a bolt on. <laughs> For the moment, I'm putting it on this door, all right? Well, you've got 22 on there already. I don't want the burglars in here again. Well, I have to open this door every morning. It's practically my first job. By the time I've finished, I'm pooped for the rest of the day. Watch your language, please. <laughs> Just because you think you're the phantom parent. <laughs> I will not have you throwing your weight about here. Hey, I've just had an idea. Uh, tonight, if I set the alarm and wake you up every half hour, how, how loud do you think you could bark? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how you can suddenly ruin your life. Mind you, I've been trying for ages. <laughs> the trouble is, being up on all hours, I don't get out enough. So when I did get out that night at Elsie's party, I must have gone mad. Funny, the only thing I can remember clearly is playing a few hands in this Monopoly school that was raging in the conservatory. I bought property in Soho. I should have been warned. Eat your chips. Oh, don't want them. They're gone cold anyway. I've got no appetite. I feel as though I've got this great big hard lump right in here. Well, you've eaten your beef burger, now eat your chips. <laughs> It's not beef burger, it's guilt. Ah, unless you think you uh, do feel guilty and all. Young life wasted because of my ungovernable lust for elderberry wine. I'm not, not talking about that. I'm talking about wasting them lovely chips. Look at that one there, that's beautiful. Look, here I am, suffering from an emotional crisis, and all you can say is eat your chips. That's the soundest advice you'll ever get for an emotional crisis, is that? Is all them overprivileged society neurotic women at this very moment, are lying on psychiatrists. Lying on what? Couches. <laughs> Let me finish my words, please. <laughs> and the best thing for them would be a purple apple of chips. Well, it never happens in great literature like that, advice like that, doesn't? I mean, you never see Hamlet coming on, wringing his hands, and saying to be or not to be in a voice bellowing from the wings, Here, eat your chips! <laughs> oh, dear, dear Granville, fetch your cloth. <laughs> well, what, what are you supposed to be doing now? I thought I might change my whole personality. <laughs> they will if you keep walking into them handlebars. <laughs> Listen, would you clean this nameplate here? My name's Arkwright, not the Darkwright. Get it on. <laughs> They're all right outside. I can see outside. It's just in here in the land of the midnight 40-watt bulb. <laughs> Well, I believe in saving energy. Yeah. I wish you believed in saving mine. From what I've heard of you lately, you're not all that fervent about it yourself, are you? Eh? <laughs> I watched it all happening. Well, it's more than I did. <laughs> I saw it going off the rails. It all started when we had be 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 be. It's no good. You know I can't understand Morse code. <laughs> Trying to say baby baby BBC two. That's what I'm trying to say. Look, there's two ways that a young man can go wrong in this life, Granville. Get crime and a higher education. And I don't know which is worse. At least if you're a criminal, I suppose you can get time off for good behaviour. But with BBC two. <laughs> well, I've got to change my life. I mean, I can't stay like this forever, can I? I mean, how could you look debonair in a flaming pinny? I saw the way things were going when you put them racing transfers on your cycle clips. <laughs> I noticed when Sean Connery packed it in, all the trouble I had finding that new James Bond. I've never heard my name whispered about. I bet they never said, Hey, why don't we get Granville? No, all I ever get is Granville. Fair, fair, fetch your cloth. <laughs> this is 
listen. <laughs> you just mount your powerful single-seater gleaming black sinister machine, will you? The, the double O-Eck. <laughs> Get these deliveries off round the town. Take that biological Watsy to Finkel Street. See if we can aid Mrs. Jarvis in her, her hunt for the ultimate detergent. <laughs> I'll wait until it's dark. Oh, and uh, you better knock very loudly at uh, Mrs. Hemingway's. You know how busy she's liable to be if that decorator's still in. <laughs> oh, if Mrs. Ogden gets a bit polite, you, uh, just watch it. It means she's trying to get out of pain. <laughs> then when you've done that, hurry back here, because we've uh, got to make this door burglar-proof and all. <laughs> Seen a dog? Now that's because it moves like a panther. <laughs> Keep it in the back in here. In a den cunningly constructed out of her baked bean tins. The whole floor is, is strewn with human remains and sent in schoolboys' caps. Whoop, 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 get out, get out. <laughs> What's his name? I don't know what his name is. I've never been able to get there near enough to read his collar. You haven't got a dog. Listen. <laughs> Why aren't you you at school? Got chicken pox. Oh, get out. Get out. <laughs> need waiting on, Mr. Arkwright. It's my pleasure, Gladys Emanuel. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what would you in the me me medical profession recommend for a love bite? Your own teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese fighter pilot. <laughs> Where have you been? Cycling around Pearl Harbor again? <laughs> oh, the chain came off and uh, Mrs. Ogden kindly let me wash my hands. Oh, I hope you got the money, did you? Yes, yes, Well, yes. come on, let's have the money then. I've told you, Granville, get it in the till. You must regard the modern pound note as a little fish out of water. Whereupon common human decency demands that you get it as quickly as you can into this little aquarium here. <laughs> You're going to risk that vicious spring clip. I don't want to look. You just tell me when it's all over. No, oh, don't be daft. You only have to jiggle it a bit. <laughs> One of these days, your reactions are going to get slower. Now, have you any instructions? Do you want your fingers burying or cremating? <laughs> I want them round your ear all if you don't get something done in this shop. Now, get that, get that bike in. Beware the dog. What dog? Eh? You don't need a dog. You only need a sign, you see. It deters and that'll keep the burglars away. Everybody knows that we haven't got a dog. Shh. We have, we have. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> well, if they want to break in here, that's not going to stop them, well, is it? It'll only make them think twice, oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can just see them standing out there trembling and saying to each other, Hey, Charlie, don't go in there unless you're going to get mauled by that great big ugly sign. <laughs> We'll just have to think of something a bit more convincing, won't we? Medical poetry. <laughs> Coronary in motion. Has he got any vascular history? I don't think he's got any O levels. <laughs> What's he think he's doing? 
Got no idea. He just said he was going out to borrow something. Not to actually buy anything? Oh, no. He wasn't upset enough for that. <laughs> you can laugh. But I shall be on guard tonight, so you can sleep safe in your bed. Well, come to think of it, I might be able to arrange it so that we uh, uh, could both sleep safe in your bed. <laughs> See me and my hand's still shaking, but, but but I think I've got the hang of it now. It knows who's master. You certainly look like it. Oh yes. It's all in the day, day it's all the voice, you know. Yeah, it was all in yours. Blind panic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, they don't crit their city size in. <laughs> <laughs> me you have to risk their life and limb. And hey, where did you get it? Kirk Cooper's kennels, uh, looking after it for someone for the weekend. I feel safer now knowing it's walking about in the shop, you know. <laughs> There'll be no one wandering round the back of my counter now. <laughs> well, not even me. <laughs> what, what, what does it eat? Uh, people, I hope. <laughs> Blaming the burglars. <laughs> Mrs. Smith, and uh, don't forget to tell all your friends about the uh, Arkwright's budget prices uh, during the opening hours, will you? And the ferocious wild dog we've got at the back when we close. Thank you very much. Get down, I've told you that. Get down. <laughs> ah, now, Mrs. Brocklesby, is it the usual of you? Yes, it always is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> there we are, two pints of extra strong exportable and an ounce of black shag. There we are. <laughs> Now then, anything for Mr. Brocklesby this evening? <laughs> is he all right? Is he all right for knitting patterns? <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Goodbye. You naughty dog. <laughs> Good in the air, like like. <laughs> Hope you haven't rubbed my soul music off. No, no, that's on the other track. Anyway, in my young day, when a young man had something on his soul, he was expected to scrape it off on the edge of the gutter. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't keep the dog. Because it was eating about a cubic yard of dog meat every day. <laughs> Have you seen the price of that stuff lately? It'd be cheaper to just let the burglars in once a week to help themselves. <laughs> anyway, look, that's my tape recorder and I would like it back. I and feel like playing something in my room. Yes, what well, you play in other people's rooms, it worries me. <laughs> it's all right for you, but I'm very young to have such a big responsibility. I'm not even going to consider that remark. Now, just get outside, will you, and find that money I dropped on the pavement. Oh, look, it's pitch dark. Listen, with inflation the way it is, it won't be worth looking for if we don't find it before the morning, will it? <laughs>
have to be a bit, a bit more awake than that, won't you, if we're going to catch these bur burglars? I'd like to see anyone get through that in the dark without getting his conscience pricked. <laughs> but there's only the two of us. I mean, we can't guard it all, can we? There's not only the shop now to look after, there's that entire stretch of pavement out there where you think you might have lost a shilling. There's <laughs> no my might about it. I know when I've lost a shilling, my pulse starts to race and I have this uh, difficulty in breathing. Hey, Rod, it's my night off. I'm not stopping you, am I? You can go out. I'm going to do 8 to 12, and you're going to do to 12 to 8. You can't be fairer than that, can you? <laughs> what happens if you walk in here in the morning and you find someone hanging there? Well, I shall make a th thorough examination of the body to see there's nothing of mine in his pockets. <laughs> She won't have the baby before I get there. I said I'm... Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, just pass it. <laughs> on a ladder? Uh, you, you haven't seen any money on the pavement, have you, when you've been going to do it your car? And if you climbed up here to ask me that, you want a tight bandage round your neck. Uh, look, you, you know I said that you were going to sleep safely in your bed. I was, I was just uh, checking to see you doing it properly. And you woke me up to ask me. Well, that's really using your brains. Look, I'm going to be, be on patrol here all night. You great Tom fool. Oh, my good oh. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to, to tell you both that uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> suspicious noises, it'll only be me breathing a bit heavy. I suppose you think that's a comfort, knowing you're creeping about like Wee Willy Winky. <laughs> get off down and let me get this window closed. No, no, I've got well, one alternative plan in mind. Look, will folk think if they see you with a ladder up here? Uh, that's my alternative plan. If I brought the ladder in hey, here... Oh, get I'd... out! Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! <laughs> oh. oh, dear. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're leaving Granville in that shop if you're really expecting trouble. He's not in the shop. He's gone off out. Well, who's that walking about in there now? <laughs> oh, well, that'll be... Uh, 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 that... Blah, 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 blah! <laughs> 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 bloody burglars! <laughs> you lost. It's not behind here, either. <laughs> oh, you and all. Listen, I could, I could have shot you, you know, but a point blank. And that's a terrible place to be wounded. <laughs> then who'd ride the shot bike, eh? <laughs> we, we, we were only cuddling a bit. Uh, anyway, look, it's all right. It turns out that our little Eric is Maureen's sister's little Eric. <laughs> she were only looking after him. I got it all wrong. <laughs> so the way I feel at the moment, I don't care if we do get burglars. Oh, very nice. Very nice and cosy, isn't it? Come on outside, both of you. And, and don't forget you're on guard tonight at 12 till 8. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, my best ceiling down, <laughs> Somebody been up there? What do you mean up there? What on this on the ceiling? How many people do we get coming in off the street and sheltering on our ceiling? <laughs> I mean upstairs, in the room above. That's my room above. They might have got peppered with shot. I'd have to move bloody fast, wouldn't I? <laughs> Just fire the gun down here and run upstairs in time to get their shepherd with pot. <laughs> what do you mean peppered with shot? I don't know what I mean. Now come on, I'll do it both of you. 
don't think your uncle likes me. Well, it's nothing personal, Maureen. It's just that he doesn't like everybody. <laughs> They all think I'm a grasping old man. Especially Nurse Gladys Emanuel. She thinks I'd get grasp hold of anything. <laughs> it's quite obvious she thinks I'm unmoved by art or music. Maybe if I could le learn to play something. Mind you, it's amazing the volume of sound I can produce just by running one finger lightly up and down her left leg. 